Hey everybody, in this final episode, we're going to be finishing the Space Invaders game. Now, up until this point, we have um, got what you can see on screen at the moment. We can fire bullets, and um, you'll see that the bullets don't collide with the enemies, the enemies don't shoot yet, and there is no winning and losing screen, and these are exactly the things that we're going to build in this episode. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of an offset from the bottom of the screen to the uh, spaceship. That's been bugging me all along. I just think it looks a bit nicer. So let's go ahead and add that. So right here where the position of the player is set, we want to subtract from the Y value. We're going to subtract 15 pixels and save it. And once we run it again, you'll see that there will be a bit of a space between the spaceship and the bottom of the screen, which makes it look a bit nicer. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to implement the collision. So every time a bullet that we shoot hits an enemy, uh, we want the enemy to die. So let's add a new function called collide rect, which takes two rectangles as arguments and checks if they intersect. The return value of this function is going to be false whenever the two rectangles which are passed in as arguments into the function do not collide. If, however, there is a collision, then the return value turns to true. Now we're going to go to the function update laser, and we're going to add a for loop to this function, which is going to iterate through all the enemies in the enemies list. And it is going to check if a laser which is fired by the player intersects with an enemy spaceship. And if that is the case, it will delete the laser and the corresponding enemy from the screen. So now if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that whenever the bullet strikes one of the enemy spaceships, they are deleted from the enemy's list. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to allow the spaceships to fire lasers back at the player spaceship. So let's go ahead and move on to create the lasers for the enemy spaceship. In the constant state, we're going to begin by creating a uh, new array, which is called enemy lasers. And in this array, all the lasers that are created by the enemies are going to be stored. In addition to that, we're also going to create a cooldown, uh, which is going to delay the firing of the bullets by the enemy spaceships. Now in the create enemy function, we're going to make a small adjustment, which is we're going to add to this line of code over here because every enemy is going to have an X and a Y value on the screen, as well as a DOM element, but we're also going to add a cooldown to each individual enemy. And now the cooldown is similar to the one that we added to the player spaceship. It helps us delay the bullets uh, from all the enemies in this case. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a few changes to the update enemies function. The first change we're going to make is we're going to add the container as an argument because we're going to use this in just a few seconds uh, right down here. Under set position, we're going to add an if statement. And this if statement is going to call a function called create enemy laser whenever the cooldown of an individual enemy spaceship is zero. As the name suggests, the create enemy laser function will create a bullet that is fired towards the player. And once that happens, we want to reset the cooldown to a new random value. Then we also need to make sure to add a line of code that reduces the enemy cooldown. So now let's move on and actually create this function uh, that I've highlighted over here. Uh, the create enemy laser function. The create enemy laser function is going to be really similar to a function which we've already created called the create laser function, which uh, creates the laser of the player. So let's go ahead and quickly copy that uh, to save just a little bit of time. And we're going to make two small adjustments to this function. The first one is we're going to rename it. And subsequently, we need to change the laser to the enemy laser. So after a call to the create enemy laser function is made, uh, a laser is created. But of course, we also need to update it 
and make it move across the screen. And that is precisely what our next function is going to do. So now let's go ahead and create the update enemy lasers function. First, we're going to go ahead and create a constant called enemy lasers, and we're going to set it equal to the enemy lasers list within the constant state. Then we're going to create a for loop which iterates through the entire list of lasers and it increases their y value so they move down the screen. Then we're going to add an if statement which is going to check if the laser is outside of the game window. And if that is the case, then we want to delete the laser. Subsequently, we're going to define the rectangle of the enemy laser as well as the rectangle of the spaceship. And we can then add an if statement saying that if there is a collision between the spaceship rectangle and the enemy rectangle, we want there to be a console output that says game over. And at the very end of this, we still need to set the position of the enemy laser. Now we're going to go down to our main update function and then we are going to adjust the calls to the function. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a call to the update enemy lasers function and we're going to pass in the container as an argument in the update enemies function. Now let's run this and check out the results. As you can see the lasers are sort of misaligned and uh, everything is still a bit wonky and that is because we still need to add some styling to the style sheet. So let's go ahead and make that change and then we should be able to fix this. So now if we go to our style sheet we can copy the styling which we used for the laser which is fired by the player spaceship and use it for the enemy spaceships as well because the styling is going to be very similar. So let's make sure to adjust the name over here and then also perhaps change the size of the bullets and that's it. Now if we go ahead and run this you'll see that the game is pretty much running smoothly. The enemies can fire bullets, we can fire bullets at the enemies and the enemies are deleted whenever we hit them. In addition to that, I'll want to show you one thing, which is if we go into the console and I run my spaceship into a bullet deliberately, um, as I will right here, you can see that the console uh, terminal logs the word game over. So what we want to do now is we want to add a game over screen that allows us to reset the game and a win screen that also allows us to reset the game. This is going to require several changes. The first one is that we need to go to our main.js file and in the constant state, we're going to add a new value, which is game over. By default, it is going to be false. Then we're going to go to our update enemy lasers function. And instead of logging game over in our console, we're going to change the state um, of the game over variable to true. Now we're going to go down to the main update function and in the main update function we're going to add a pair of if statements. In the first if statement we're going to say that if the state game over is true, so if we've lost the game and a bullet has hit the player, then we want to show the lose screen. Now similarly if we win the game we want the appropriate win screen to show up. Now the condition that is going to make this pop-up show up is if there are no more enemies left in our enemies list. Moving on in our main HTML file we are going to create a new div and it is going to be the div for our losing window and one div for our winning window. And each of these windows is also going to include a button and on the click of the button, we can reload the game. The last thing that we need to do is to add some styling to our CSS file. Let's begin with the lose window styling. Now in the CSS file, you can add all types of different styling to the lose window. I've gone ahead and chosen a red background, white colored text, and um, a small pop-up animation when it comes into our screen. The window that appears when the game is won is going to be very similar in styling to the losing window. The only difference is that the color of the background is going to be green. 
Now we can go ahead and appreciate our finished game. You can see that if I run into a bullet, it says game over, and we have the possibility to try again. Similarly, if I go ahead and play the game properly and uh, win the game uh, by shooting all the enemy spaceships that are on the screen, you'll see that another window pops up which says that we have won the game. Alright, so that is the end of this episode. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like and see you in the next videos. Thank <laughs> you.